Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, I am going to talk about data sources, data sets, and how to create reports by using data sets, how to create workspace and dashboards, and the data flow from start to end, which means from data source to dashboard, how the data will flow. Next thing is Power BI desktop installation and what is the workflow of Power BI. Finally, we will talk about relational database. The first three topics we already discussed in the part 1 video. Let's start the video now. First one is what is data sources? So the definition itself told that a data source is the location or repository for the data you import into your data warehouse or reporting tools. Data source is nothing but it is a source in which we can push or pull the data. The data sources are further divided into two types. First one is on-premises database and second one is cloud database. On-premises database the examples are SQL servers, SSAS, Azure Active Directory, Exchange and Access databases, Teradata, Oracle, MySQL, IBM DB2 and SAP HANA etc. So coming to cloud databases, Azure SQL databases, SQL data warehouse, marketplace, Azure HD insights, blob storage, Azure table storage, document DB and data lake. So now let's see how these data sources are related to reports and how these are related to dashboards. Here we are going to discuss about important concepts which we are using in this entire training. So having a clear cut idea is good to understand the Power BI better. Here I make a note, most people are saying that data sets and data sources are same. But this is not true, I will explain about this in detail in this video. First of all, let me open this excel here. First one is data sources, next database or data sets or data models, reports, dashboards. Yes, this is correct. Let me discuss uh, the different types of databases here or data sources. First, let me talk some of the data source examples. So, SAP, CSV, Excel. JSON, Azure SQL, next one Azure Cloud Storage, finally CRM. So let me divide these data sets. This belongs to on prem databases, this one also on premises, this one also on premises, Azure SQL is cloud, cloud database, cloud database, cloud database, on prem, this one is cloud. So I already told that data sources and data sets both are not same. Okay. So if we have a requirement like you want to prepare a data set by using all these data sources. Suppose if you take Excel. So it contains multiple sheets. But for our requirement 
we will take only one sheet from the excel from sap also some data like this we will create a data set from this kind of different data sources so like from excel we can extract the budget data so from invoices we can extract from sap currency conversion we can extract from json from azure sql we can extract employees data here azure cloud storage we can extract service data and here we can extract product list so we are going to extract the desired data from these many data sources okay all these data sources are huge to analyze so we can only extract what we need here you need to remember that we need to extract only the desired data so after extracting the data from these data sources we can create a data set you got the point here these all are data sources from data sources we can extract the desired data and we will create the data set now data set will be used to develop a report here in the report section from this data set we can create one report like report 1 we can create second report report 2 um we can create another report report 3 like this we can create these many reports from this data set so which means one data set will be used to develop the multiple reports now you want to build the complete dashboard so how you can build the complete dashboard by using these data sources let's come from initial stage first of all in the data sources we will extract the desired data and we will create a data set from data set we will create the different types of reports from these reports we can create one dashboard so this dashboard it is accessed by managers company directors senior managers etc here you can see that one dashboard will have the data from multiple reports okay but one report point to a single data set the report 1 points to data set report 2 also points to a single data set report 3 also points to a single data set suppose in another case we will extract the data from here and we will form the data second data set data set 2 this one is data set 1 now from the data set we can create report 4 and report 5 okay now we have data set 1 and data set 2 remember that these data sets will created by using these data sources okay we will extract the desired data from these data sources and we'll create the data set this data set 1 data set this are entirely depends upon our requirements now here we have two data sets data set 1 and data set 2 now there is no relationship between data report 1 and data set 2 see here there is no relationship between report 1 and data set 2 
it is not possible for report 1 to use the second data set like data set 2 at the same time one data set can have the data from multiple sources we, as we discussed earlier so this data sets having the sources from the data sets having the data from multiple sources but this one report these reports will point to only single data set not multiple data sets report 1 will only use data set 1 it is not possible to use data set 2 or if you create data set 3 data set 4 report 1 will only use data set 1 data now it is clear to everybody what is data sources what is data sets and what is uh, dashboards what are the reports and how the data flows from data sources to dashboard now here you can find etl process as we discussed in our first part of the video how how can we find etl process here here these all are data sources we can extract all this data to form a data set one so here we are extracting the data so this is the part one extracting the data after extracting we have to transform the data to create the data set one after transforming the data we will load all the data to here data set one so here also transform will come and finally we will load the data so this process is known as etl we extracted the data from different sources and before loading data into data set we can transform and load into these data sets by using the data sets we can create reports by using the reports we can build the dashboards now let's see another scenario suppose there are two data sets with different reports like data set 1 data set 2 report 1 2 3 report 4 5 okay do you think can we extract these reports to form a single dashboard right it is not possible because these these reports are belongs to this data set 1 these reports are belongs to this data set 2 so in this scenario what you can do here the answer is by using the workspaces we can create the dashboards from multiple reports yes here i am going to introduce the workspace So the workspace is in Power BI service. By using this workspace, we can create the dashboard. So it is possible to create the dashboard from different types of re reports by using workspace. But one dashboard will only have one workspace. Suppose if we have another workspace, it is not possible to create the same dashboard by using the, these two workspaces. So dashboard will only form by using a single workspace. Okay. But we will create the dashboard by using multiple reports and multiple data sets and multiple data sources i think you got the idea how the data will flows from data sources to dashboard so it is possible with power bi service by using workspaces so i want to talk about one important topic here that is moving of the reports the question is is this possible to move report 1 from data set 1 to data set 2 the answer is no we can't move the report 1 to here it is not possible to move report 1 from data set 1 
to dataset 2 but we can duplicate the reports you can duplicate the report 1 here in dataset 2 but this is not a good practice you will definitely mess with the structure so better to republish the reports into power bi service here if you want to add a new data it is not possible for this flow but we can change the existing data source data or connected data suppose if we have these many data sources these data sources will give data to these data sets after creating the dashboard now if you come and if you add another excel sheet excel2 so it is not possible to connect this excel2 with all this structure okay it is not possible to add another data source after creating the dashboard suppose initially you have 100 rows the day of creating the reports but the next day 50 rows are added you can refresh the data in the next day it is set by automatically or manually both the things are possible in this case but we can't increase the data sources if you we can increase the data already existing in the data model but we can't add another data sources already existed data model next one power bi desktop is manually refreshing but power bi service it can be done manually or schedule refresh by using data gateway next we'll talk about space limit in the workspace so is there any limit for this workspace in the power bi so there is no limits for this workspace but the limit comes with users and depending on the subscription like free pro premium it will vary so maximum limit is 10 gb per user but no need of that much memory to create the reports your reports will goes up to maximum 100 mb beyond that you need to use another data model that is called composite model this is simple data model and we'll talk about composite data model here the main difference comes from data sources In this simple data model you can extract whatever the data we need to create the dashboard but in the composite data model we will extract all the data from the data sources so this is huge that's why we need more memory to create the reports so in the composite data you need to pull all the data from data sources i want to explain another thing here i told that after creating the data model after creating the dashboards it is not possible to add another data source but we can increase the data or we can increase the number of rows in the excel after creating the dashboard but what about the columns if if you increase the number of columns in your excel sheet it will reflect to data source 1 or it will reflect to data source 2 you can use those columns in reports or workspaces or dashboards so we'll discuss all the column operations in data modeling in detail at the time we'll discuss what the relationship between the columns and data tables and how the columns are impacting the data sets and how these are impacting the reports and dashboards okay so this is all about the data flow and data sources data sets reports workspaces and dashboards now i already discuss about this data sources we have to pull the desired data from the data sources to data sets but the question here how we can pull the data from the data sources to data set how it is possible to pull by using queries you can pull the data from the data sources to the data sets that to desired data and also by using queries we can do a lot more things 
by using queries we can do specify the columns for exporting into power bi second one stored procedures are used to query data stored or used to curing the data next one suppose we use the query it will return only desire it will only returns desired rows and columns so examples of this query is sql queries and dax so here let me introduce the dax for you so it is a data analysis and expression so these are similar to our excel formulas but used for relational databases like sql here i use the word relational databases what is the relational database there are two types of databases are available currently the those are sql and no sql sql and no sql the main difference is sql will handle relational databases or relational tables very effectively but no sql won't handle these relationships so here what are these relationships suppose if you have a excel here in this excel we have lot of sheets like sheet 1 sheet 2 sheet 3 sheet 4 in sheet 2 you stored product in sheet 2 you stored products so this is basically product database here product number and serial number who will handle the product means employee number and product uh, description uh, uh, and different columns we can see in this product database products this one employee database here we will get employee number and also product number because which product are handled by which employee product number and also description and various columns are available this one is exporting in this exporting we have states for the states we have state number here also we have product number and employee number etc so if you come to product database here product number is the primary key and here if you come to employee databases employee number is the primary key but we also have this product number so this is primary key pk here the product number is foreign key here product number is primary key employee number is foreign key so primary key is the unique one and this foreign key will indicate the relationship between this data set to this employee data set by using this employee number or by using this primary key in this employee database we can relate this products by using this foreign key and primary key it will create a little bit of confusion in your mind 
But if you already have a good knowledge in SQL database, it is very easy to understand for you. So this is about 3D part. Now let's install the Power BI desktop in your computer. Open your browser and follow this link. Click on download free button. It will redirect it to your store. Click on install. That's it. It will automatically download the Power BI desktop. After downloading, click on open. Then here we go. As you know, Power BI is a Microsoft product, so it is not available in MacBook. Please welcome. Just ignore this. So this is Power BI desktop interface. Now let me talk about Power BI desktop workflow. So what we actually do by using Power BI. After installing the Power BI, open the Power BI desktop in your PC. At the time, the first thing we have to do is we need to connect the data by using data sources. As we discussed earlier, we need to create the data set by using all the data sources. The data sets is entirely depends upon the our requirements. Okay, you have to connect the data to the Power BI. This is the first step. So after loading the data or after getting the data into Power BI, there are three steps. First one is data preparation. Second one is data analysis. Third one is data visualization. Let's talk one by one. First one is data preparation. In the data preparation, we need to use the Power Query Editor. In Power Query Editor, we have to do lot of transformation techniques. We have to use lot of transformation techniques to eliminate the errors and to clean the data and to eliminate the unwanted data. So we have to make sure that this data we need to use for analysis purpose. After cleaning the data, we need to load this data from this Power Query Editor. Next thing is data analysis. So here we will create a data model by using relationships. So these are one to many, many to many, one to one. These are the different types of uh, data relationships. Here we have to inspect and we have to explore and understand the data and we will view and edit the relationship between all the tables. We have to create some custom tables like date tables to connect with all the tables. So this is about data analysis. So after creating the data model, we have to visualize the data. Here you need to create a report which will consume by your manager or your stakeholder or your senior administration in your organization. So here in this Power BI desktop, in the visualization tab, you have to create the reports and by using different kinds of visualization techniques. You can see this, this is the Power BI desktop interface. Here we have report view, data view and model view. We will discuss each and every tab in detail in Power BI tour. So this is about this video and in the next video I am going to talk about the overview of the Power BI desktop and how to import various data sets into Power BI. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.